right, man. So I'm here today with Keon Walker. Keon is the uh, head football coach uh, of Hoboken High School. He's a Hoboken firefighter. Uh, he is a, uh, a business owner. He has his own um, sports business business that he has going on. It's for training uh, really athletes of, of all sports. Um, and he's been a friend of mine for, for close to uh, just over a decade now. So uh, I'm happy to have you on. So Keon, welcome to the show. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate yeah. it. Absolutely, absolutely. So what's what's going on in the in the Walker household, man? What's going on with you? Not much, man. I mean, pretty much the same as everybody else's household, you know, just trying to maintain it and keep things all together, especially during these uh, uh, these troubled times. Um, you know, trying to keep the kids busy. Ultimately, that's the, the number one thing as a parent, trying to keep the kids busy. Um, they're always bored, always hungry, <laughs> you know, so you're you're usually always cooking, uh, running out to the store, ordering food, you know. So, I mean, other than that, it's been fine, man. I, I, I'm blessed and I'm, 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 you know, I'm thankful to have this opportunity to, you know, be home and actually uh, be there, you know, a present with the kids, you know, especially yeah. with always being busy. Yeah, yeah. Now, so I do want to ask you that. So, you know, the rest of us, most of us kind of got halted on, on, our, on our lives when, when Corona kind of first hit. Um, but you being a first responder, you know, your, your job never stops. Um, right. So, so how did that kind of, how has that kind of started since really the February, March timeframe and even to now, how have you really handled that? Well, I, I mean, I think, I, I think I've handled it pretty well. Um, I actually caught COVID. Oh, wow. You know, um, I didn't know until I actually went and got tested. Um, I, I had very, I didn't have a lot of symptoms. I think I caught pink eye. Mm. And then I think I had a little like a, a nasal, um, um, nasal congestion, okay. but I had no clue I had COVID because I was still, you know, um, can you see me? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. I kicked out. Oh, for a second. You're good. I'm sorry. But I, I was still, um, training, running around doing some of the stuff that I normally do. And then after I took the test, that's when I found out I was positive for COVID. So, um, I was out of work in the beginning for, uh, I would say about two and a half, three weeks. Okay. But um, when I went back, I mean, you know, things were pretty normal for the most part. But, um, you know, they moved. They, they, they separated some of the houses. They put people in different spots just to uh, try to uh, avoid, you know, passing the virus on to one another. Okay. You know, but um, other than that, I mean, we, we, we continue to do our job like normal, you know. Yeah, well, we're all thankful for you because without you guys, we, we'd all be in a really tough spot. Um, yeah. So now I know you mentioned kind of keeping your kids busy. So you, besides just being a parent and, and, a, and a coach of a team, you also kind of have a business that revolves around children, right? Around kids, right. Young, young adults, and you train them. Um, yeah. How has this kind of last six months or so kind of brought you to either, whether it's develop new training methods because some of the kids you can't get in front of as much, or right. just how, how do you stay on kids? Because when they're like, I know for me growing up, right. When I had nothing to do, I usually found trouble. So how, you know, right. kids right now really don't have a lot to do. So how have you kind of upped that part of your business to, to continue to stay on top of these kids, but also kind of to continue to help them? Well, um, like you said, man, uh, uh, I say, always say the, the devil's playground is boredom, right? When mm -hmm. you have nothing to do, you just pretty much just, you know, do stuff to get you in trouble. Yep. So I think, I think a lot of the parents are like, you know what, we got to keep these kids busy. We got to have them do something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, you know, I've been doing my program for about two, three years now. And um, the parents see, you know, I, I got some really, really good um, kids. We, we do a lot of great things. And they're like, you know what, that's the perfect place for us to send our kids. You know, um, I was pretty much in raw way. I, I branched out to Lyndhurst, New Jersey now. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been great, man. I get a lot of young kids, you know, a lot of these young kids who have been in quarantine or lockdown for a while. So the moment they get out, it's like, you know, they want to talk, they want to play around, you know, because right. they want to be social. You got to understand they want to be social because they haven't been for so long. Mm -hmm. So they get the opportunity to get out, um, become better athletes and also interact with one another. So I think, I mean, it's, it's been great. It's actually been great. I'm upwards to like over 20 something kids I work with. That's awesome. And, it, and it's been a blessing. I actually, um, I bought, I brought my son out a few times. He was eight years old. And, you know, he gave him the opportunity to also interact and also, like you said, get better and train and um, be productive. So it's been great. So for, for those that don't know, Keon, uh, your background, you, you were a standout high school football player at Hoboken. You were a standout player um, at, at Syracuse. Uh, you know, there, there is kind of that old adage of if you, those that can't, 
do teach, right? And that was, that was really for me, right? I wasn't right. the most gifted athletically, but I always understood the game and I loved to coach it. Right. But you were someone that was very gifted in the game, very gifted, and, and were able to take those talents to, to kind of to, to spring you all the way to playing high division one football. How do you approach the game? Because certain things, of course, are going to be more natural to you, right? You have a lot more athletic ability. How have you taken that? Because I had the opportunity to coach with you, and I saw how you're able to break down the game for kids of all levels. How have you focused on that? Is that kind of a taught mentality? Is that just something you uh, evolved into? Where where did that come from? See, um, I think, like you said, the whole mentality of of if you uh, people that, would you say people who don't? um, People who can't teach, right? Who can't. People who can't right. teach, right? Well, obviously, I mean, you, you, like you say, you were a really good coach. I am, 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 in my book, you was a really great coach. I had a great time coaching with you. But for me, um, being a good coach is someone who's able to understand the game at a high level, mm-hmm. but at the same time, be able to dumb it down to, to, uh, for the audience that he's, you know, he's teaching, right? Mm-hmm. So early on in my career as a coach, I would teach kids at a level that I understood the game mm. and kids were, you know, kids would be confused by what I'm teaching. So I had to learn that, you know what, I, these kids don't understand the game at the level that I do. Mm. So the whole, and I, and I look at it as a, 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 from the teacher standpoint where every kid can learn. So me, I had to take the game and break it down and be able to teach it to all different types of kids, you know, and be mm. able to teach it, for, for, for every level of understanding, you know what I'm saying? So it's easier for me because one, I understand that the, uh, the inner workings of what I'm teaching. I'm not just somebody who, you know, uh, went to a clinic, who uh, learned a game from somewhere else, you know? A lot of stuff that I teach, I actually performed it. So it makes it easier for me to teach it, you know, at that, you know, easier for me to teach it. But at the beginning, the hardest thing was being able to teach it at a level that kids could understand it. And once I figured that out, you know, the game, teaching the game of football became easy. Well, that's awesome. And, and I want to I wanna jump back just a little bit into kind of your history. You, you, again, you were a standout athlete at Hoboken, as well as you came from a line of a ton of standout athletes kind of within this yeah. 10-year period in, in Hoboken. And I know, um, you know, me growing up, you know, Coach Stinson was, was you know, a huge, huge factor of that, his, his coaching mentality. But, but just, you know, the – the talent that he had around him. But, but growing up, for those that don't, maybe didn't see Hoboken High School play or didn't get to watch those things, what was that like, too, being, being in an area that is so small? I mean, Hoboken is one square mile, very, very small area, but yet high Division One after high Division One athlete, NFL athletes, I mean, just guys that were, would get after it. How, how did that – how is that growing up in that mentality where – if you didn't bring your A game every day, there was a next kid that was also going to go to Miami or Florida or Penn State Absolutely. right behind you. So how Absolutely. does that kind of form the rest of your life in that side of it? I think um, as far as the, the program part of it, um, like you said, being in a small area and being able to produce good athletes and having these really good football teams, I think creating a program that was so demanding that you know, you were going to get the best out of the kids that could uh, fight through, hmm. you know, fight through all of the, the demands of being a part of the program, right? So if you make this program where you know it might be 30, 40 kids at the beginning, but it's going to be so demanding that a lot of these kids aren't going to make it to the end. Right. And if the kids that make it to the end, you pretty much know, all right, these kids are going to be determined and these kids really, really want it, you know? And I think the, that the program, like I said, being so demanding, helped create a lot of who we are. Also, competing with each other, right, quietly competing with each other also helped us because though we respected one another and we loved one another, we always wanted to up our game to be better than the person standing next to us. And we knew that in order for us to continue that success, that was a requirement that you can't stay still at the same time, try to push the, the, the program forward. Right. So every day, every uh, month, every year, we had to continuously get better in order to keep the program to a high standard. Cause we know people um, underneath us were trying to catch up. Right. 
right? So we always had to continuously become better. We always had to continuously uh, push one another. And we always had to continuously, like I said, have that quiet competition and always try to be better than the next person. And that alone helped us to just become better football players. Now, do you, do you feel like any of that was taught? Because I know a lot of you uh, that played right. together in that era, and it's just, it just feels like it's inside of you, right? So, but I wasn't right. there as a kid with you to know if this was taught. And, and the reason I ask this question is because now you're on the other side, right? Now you right. have the opportunity to affect these, these children and these kids' lives from a top-down approach. And do you feel like some of this can be taught as well as kind of you have it in you? Or, or where do you think that, that balance is? I think it can be in you, whether it can be taught or not, I honestly don't know. Obviously times have changed, just so, mm-hmm. so that hurts a little bit. Um, I just feel like if it's in you, it's in you, right? Mm-hmm. If you can teach kids how to play football. You can teach kids to be more responsible. You can um, coach them and teach them how to become a little bit more athletic. But the part of that you're speaking about is that the mentality, I call it the dog in you, right? You got to have that dog in you. I don't know if that can be taught. I don't know if that can be taught. That's ingrained in, in, in the makeup of who you are, right? So um, can you still have good football teams and good football players without that? Of course. Right. But to me, having that dog in you, it's, it's, it's necessary, especially when you're in crunch time, you're at those close games. And you need you need that extra um, you know, you need that person to compete for all those those kids that are to able to give you that extra, you know. And I don't know, like you said, I don't know if you can teach that. I don't I don't know. Right. But you now, can still I, have you can still have quality players without without it, you know. Right, right, right. right. And and I ask that because we've we've started to make uh, I guess kind of a, a turn as a culture into, you know, a little bit more on the participation side of things versus right. the the, the effort side of things, right? And, right. and uh, you know, I, well, one of the things that's always astounded me is, is the parental um, kind of involvement uh, yes. in, sports, <laughs> in high school sports, right? Um, you know, I was fortunate. I had a father that would tell me all the things I should and shouldn't do in the car. And then when I got to the field, it was listen to your coach and shut up, right? That was, yep. that was how I grew up. Um, but I know a lot of that's changed. So is it, is it helpful now with, with the ADU business that you have being kind of with some of the younger kids and starting to see, all right, well, now I have an opportunity to, to show parents that you need to let your kid learn on the field. You need to, these are the Absolutely. things you need to do and not say, I need to go run to the coach and say my kid could play. Right. Well, <laughs> like you said, during this time, as opposed to when we grew up, you know, the parents would just shut up. Right. right. And just let the coaches coach. They didn't pretend like they knew more than the coaches, mm-hmm. at least from my standpoint, at least from my knowledge. I don't remember um, walking off the field and having my mom meet the coach and say, oh, you should have ran this play or that play sucked or or my son should play more. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I never experienced that. Right. You know, so. As a coach and like you said, this era now this is what you experience all the time, mm-hmm. right? It's like, they know more than you. Uh, that play was trash. You shouldn't have ran that play. My son's better. My son should score more. My son should catch the ball more. My son needs to play more, right? So this is the era of, like, I, what, the Monday morning quarterback? This is the era right. of that, you know? And what I do with my ADU, and a lot of parents stick around, obviously, to watch their kids, I'm, I know that they're children, so I, I want them, I want it to be recreation for them. I don't want it to be work. And that's mm-hmm. one thing I teach, I tell them, this isn't work. What we do, what I do, what your parents do, we get up and we go to work. They, mm-hmm. that's, that's why they're able to uh, uh, afford for you to be here, right? Because they work. This is recreation. But I make sure that I tell them, when I say around the, around the cone, I want around the cone, right? Go again. When, I say behind the line. I didn't say on the line. I didn't say, you know, like I mean behind the line. And the parents, a lot of the parents support it too because they'll sit there in the back and they'll be like, come on, you got to listen to the coach. He just wants you to be better, you know? So I understand them being children, but at the same time, I'm trying to instill some discipline in them, you know, around the cone. Don't cut the cone short. Go around, you know, start all over again. Go again. Behind the line. I didn't say on the line. Start all over again. And a lot of times the parents are supportive of that. 
So that's a good thing to see. And hopefully, you know, it carries on to, you know, the high school, you know, the high school level and on and on, you know. But it's, it's definitely a tough time to be a coach right now. Yeah, and, and I've, yeah, I've seen that. And, and really across all sports, um, I think one of the things that's missing from society right now is that we're worried about pushing, right? We're always worried about right. pushing and we want everyone to kind of feel involved. Um, and I've always loved that about sports in general and competing for sure, right? There's, there's a healthy level of competition and pushing of each other um, that I think builds, builds character. I think the, the adage right. is uh, coachable kids become employable adults, right? Like yeah, absolutely. You, have, you have to be able to do that. Now, taking it to another level on that, we've both had the opportunity to coach incredibly talented kids yes. and that were coachable and right. all the way to the opposite end of the spectrum, the kids that weren't coachable and had no talent. But right. I'm going to give you kind of the split here. If you had a kid that was unbelievable talent and completely uncoachable and a kid with barely any talent but was incredibly coachable, right, how do you as a coach maintain the time and effort that goes into that, right? Because you know the kid that's got talent is going to help you on Friday nights, and that matters. It, it, there is a part of that that matters, right? Your football team needs to have talented kids to, to right. go to the next level. Right, right. But you also need to – you as a coach, right – and I want to get into this in a second, uh, you know, uh, on another coach, but um, you also have an ability to, to grow young men. And right. so how do you, how do you balance that? Cause you only have so many hours, especially in front right. of these kids now and, and their attention spans are less. So how, how do you balance that? I think, I think every kid, and, and it's, it's, it's tough to really, really balance because like you said, for the most part, you're a mentor mm -hmm. and you're trying to grow young men, young men who possibly have a lot going on, at home or in school, you know, uh, out in the street, out in the world. So you don't really want to um, give up on the kids so quickly, you know, so quickly. But at the same time, you got to keep the integrity of who you are and understand that when it comes to a program, it's bigger than just one person, right? It's bigger than one person. So you can be as talented as anybody ever, but at the same time, you got to be a kid that's got to be coachable. You got to be a kid that's have. You have to do all the things that the coach is willing to ask you to do, and you have you you have to pretty much do what everyone else is doing. And if you're not doing that, you as a coach ultimately has to decide has to decide when enough is enough, and when the integrity of who you are and your program becomes, you know, the uh, most important. So me as a coach. Like I said, I'm a mentor before anything. I'll try, 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 try. But at the same time, I will not risk the integrity of who I am in a program for anybody. And the kids will tell you, my coaches will tell you, I'll lose games. I have no problem losing games at all. I've sat guys during, um, during um, crunch time. I've sat guys during the most important um, games of the season. Like, I have no problem doing that at all because that's – because who I am and what I'm trying to do is more most important and it's more important than anything or anyone. But like you said, there is a fine line and you got to know when, when, you know, when to, to, um, you know, uh, let, you know, be more, um, more of a, I would say parent and, and coddle the person who's athletic, but you also have to be the person to say, you know what, you get in what you put out. And if you're not putting out anything, this is the result of that. You know, sure. so no, there's, yeah, definitely a, there's definitely a fine line. And, you know, I think for everybody, you know, it's going to be different. It's going to be different for everyone. Right. Now, now taking it back to, to your time as a player, um, you now again, correct me if I'm wrong, but you went to Syracuse to, to, to right. play running back, correct? Right. Right. And then you you made the transition at Syracuse to go play in the secondary yeah, right. and, and became a standout secondary player for, for Syracuse for, for a number of years. So right. it, does that... I guess, one, as a, as a player, as an 18, 19-year-old kid that thinks you're going into a situation, you were at the top, right, in Hoboken your senior year, right, all these accolades, everything. Mm -hmm. You go to Syracuse, you start over, right? It's a whole other thing. You're right, pretty over. much, yes. And then to have the expectation to be on one side of the ball and doing one thing, right, and that's what you went mm -hmm. there for, to then yeah. making that, that transition somewhere else and completely shifting your focus, I mean, is that, is that something? I guess first, first handle me that. Right? Take me through that, that transition at Syracuse and how you, you know, were able to kind of do that. I know you have to have it in you to, to be right. able to, to take that, right? Well, for me, I feel like the, the most important thing was being able to play football in high school. And what do you mean by, what do I mean by play football? Hmm. 
you know, obviously, you know a lot about Hoboken, but I wasn't a guy who only played offense or a guy who right. only played defense. I was a guy who pretty much was on the field all the time. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's only, what, 25 kids on the team, yeah. right? So I had the opportunity to play football, and a lot of these parents are so so caught up on, you know, sending my kid to this top program or sending my kid to, you know, uh, over here, this Catholic school or this prep school because of, you know, they have such a great program and that's the only way my kid can get, get recruited. Mm. What, which is a, a falsehood. One, most of those kids don't play until they're juniors or seniors at all. It's two, important. if they play two, they only get to play one side of the ball, football, mm. right? So me, when I got to Syracuse, it was easy for me to make that transition to defense because I played a ton, a ton of football on that side of the ball. Now, when I got there, ultimately coming out of high school, I thought I was a running back. I loved I was a running back. And I had schools recruit me to play running, to play defense. Uh, Miami liked me and they wanted me to play defense. I'm like, no, I'm a running back, you know? So going to Syracuse, um, I, obviously I registered in my first year. The second year, I performed very well in the spring and the summer, and I had to sit down with my coach before the season. He was like, you have to play. You're going to play. So I was, you know, I was, like, proud because I really, really worked my butt off to play. And then once the season came, I didn't play as much as I thought I would. And I knew the guys who were in front of me were a sophomore. One was a junior, so they still had a couple of years to go at Syracuse. So I said, you know what? I didn't come here to sit the bench. I came here to play football. So Coach Rippon, who was the defensive coordinator, I bugged him every day. Coach Rippon, I want to go play defense. Coach Rippon, I want to play defense. He was like, you got to ask Coach P. He ultimately makes the decision. And every day I bugged him until one day Coach P called me to the office. He's like, Keon, um, we know you were a good uh, high school um, defensive player. How do you mind playing, you know, going on the defensive side of the ball? I said, that would be great. And, you know, and then the rest was history after that. So, like I said, you know, me having the opportunity to play football on a high school level and play football, by play football, I mean actually being out there for every snap of the game pretty much helped me to make that transition. So. Yeah, no, it's, it, was, it was fun to watch. It was fun to see, right? And I think right. it really helps the way you treat the, the kids you coach because it's not right. about what position I play. It's about being on the field. It's about being part of the team. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And, the, and the collective. Now, I do want to talk about someone. Um, it is kind of a sad situation. Coach Tech Leary just passed yes. away. Yes. Um, but when I talk to you about, you know, uh, being a coach, right, and, right. and your first answer was you're a mentor first. Yes. The, the outpour of response to, to Coach Tech Leary's, you know, tragic death. Um, it's been pretty, pretty significant, right? And I think mm-hmm. that's something that me, when I was started coaching at 21, right, didn't, didn't really completely understand that side of it, right? I was, I was a lot closer to the kid's age. I was friendly right. with them and that side of it. But I look back on it now and the relationships that I've built with you and others that I coached with and, coached and got coached by, um, the imprint you, you leave on someone is a lot more than X's and O's. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't tell you half the defensive calls I had in high school but I can tell you, my, you know, one of my you know, favorite coaches, Lou Zampella, I can remember right. countless conversations I had with him. So right, how right. do you – I mean, I can understand you definitely take it to consideration saying you want to be a mentor first as a coach. Right. But, but how does that come into play? Like do you, when, when kids come back up to you, how does that feel? How does that make you feel? How do those relationships continue to develop? Well, I think for the most part, and I'm just speaking uh, about Coach Tag, when Coach Tag came back to coach, like I, I said this to someone else, that he immediately became like everybody's favorite. Mm. You know, he, he wasn't, obviously Coach Stinson was the father figure. Right. He was the one who was going to scream at you and do all the other things that, you know, a father would normally do. Mm. And I said Coach Tag was more like the big brother, the big uncle, you know, and mm. he would, you know, he, he, he'd give you that leeway to, mm. to, to just be a normal kid, just be a kid. He knew exactly what you wanted, but he also, what you needed, I'm sorry. But he also, like I said, he, he, you know, I'll put my foot in your ass if you do something wrong. Right. You know, he was that guy, and we understood that. And him as a mentor, I mean, he, he'd give you the shirt off, off his back. Mm-hmm. You know, he took me to my first um, college football game, Penn State versus Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Um, they, um, they had Curtis Enos and uh, um, Ohio State had Eddie George, oh, the running nice. back. 
so they was, that was my first football game and I was like holy crap this, this is I knew from that moment this is what I want to do but mm-hmm. I don't think that opportunity would have been possible if it wasn't for somebody like coach Sag you know and he's one of them people where like you know he enjoys seeing his kids do well like mm-hmm. genuinely enjoys you know, seeing the kids that he's, he's coached become successful and be positive um, people, you know, in society, in the community and stuff like that. And as a coach, I try to be, you know, I try to mirror exactly some of the stuff that, you know, some of what he was, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, he called the kids all the time to check on them, the kids that graduated, mm-hmm. um, see how they were doing and things of that nature. And um I feel like that's 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 important, especially coming from, you know, being in the inner city, because a lot of those kids don't have those positive, older role models to look up to, mm. you know. And you know, Coach Tag was that for a lot of people, a lot of people. And I just try to, can you know, I just, you know, pray that, you know, I'm half of, you know, the man that he was when it comes to that, you know. I just want to be somebody that you know the kids can call when they need something the kids can talk to when they're going through something at home or 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 anywhere you know so Mm -hmm. just trying to be that mentor like him like coach tag was is it's ultimately as a coach somebody that you would something that you would try to be yeah well yeah i mean and and you know from an outside perspective keon you're definitely doing that because you can see it with the kids you can see it with Mm -hmm. the the program the way that it's already started to turn around Mm -hmm. since you've been back um I do have just a couple other questions when it comes to the athletes that are involved, right? Um, I, I grew up in, an, in a time frame just like you did where we were, we were thrown at every sport possible, right? Keep mm-hmm. yourself busy like we talked about earlier and, and play a lot of sports. And there's, there's been a, an influx of, I guess, specialty sports athletes uh, yeah. maybe over the last 10 years or so. Um, I know how we grew up, so I'm curious to hear your answer as to, you know, I, I think I know which way you're going to go. But, um, you know, w- when you when you have a kid that comes to you and says, look, I'm a, I just want to play, you know, the X, right? I, that's what I want to do. I want to go to college for that. That's all I want to focus on. That's what I'm going to do all year long. How do you talk to a kid like that and say that these other sports or these other activities will not only make you a better athlete, you know, all rounded, but then also how do you worry about burning them out? I feel like if I play just one thing all the time, I'd be burned. Right. Right. But, but doing it all together, I think, is what makes makes you the athlete that you are. So how do you handle that as a coach where you want your football team players to be focused right. on football, but you want them to be the best athletes they can be? Well, I feel like, I feel like if, if somebody comes up to you, especially a child and mm-hmm. says that I'm, this is all I want to be, that's probably the parent talking, mm-hmm. you know, because very few kids are going to come up to you and be so specific as to what they want to do. Right. Especially at a young age. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a guy that um, I recommend playing multiple sports because one, you gain multiple skills um, mm-hmm. from different sports. So I'm a guy that recommends that. But I'm also a guy that that understand where I say where your money's coming from. And what do you mean by that? If I'm a six-one basketball player who's probably the center on your basketball team, right? you're probably not going to have North Carolina or Duke coming to see you play. Right? Let's be real. You know? And a lot of these kids, you get a lot of kids that be like, yeah, I'm a basketball player. I'm like, you're like 5'8", you know, 5'9". And, and you're not really that. You, you're decent, but right. I think you can be a pretty good corner. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, you know, or like I tell them all the time, if you, if you want to play basketball, say your ultimate dream is to play basketball, and – Right now, it's not working for you. I always say, you can be a good football player. You can get a scholarship for playing football. And maybe you can walk on out of uh, Kansas, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying, and play basketball. But as of right now, Kansas isn't coming to recruit you. Right. Right? So I'm one of them people that always say, know where your money's coming from. Know mm-hmm. where uh, uh, what sport is going to generate or going to get you them scholarship that you hope for. And – a lot of these parents and a lot of these kids a lot of times don't understand that because it's like tunnel vision, right? Mm-hmm. I was one of them kids for a moment, like, I'm playing basketball, I'm a basketball player. And I wasn't really, I wasn't that great at basketball. I was average, but I swore down I was going to be the next Michael Jordan, right? I thought I was going to be the next Michael Jordan. And like I said, I try to teach these kids and tell these kids that all the time. Know where your money's coming from. Know that there's different avenues for you to get the ultimate goal, mm. 
right? The ultimate goal. And the ultimate goal is one, if you want to go to college, to get the money, get the scholarship money. And like I said, if you're an average basketball player, you got some height or you got, you know, you're a little athletic, maybe football or baseball, I don't know, could be, you know, the avenue for you to get ultimately where you want to go. So I do recommend playing multiple sports. I do. But at the same time, know where your money's coming from. So a lot of your focus might have to change from being a basketball player to being a football player. Sure. Right. So that's 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 the way I coach. And that's what I believe. Yes. Play multiple sports. Yes. Gain multiple skills. But when it's crunch time, figure out ultimately how to get to your goal. Right. Yeah. That, no, absolutely. I, I, I completely agree with you. I think kids. Need yeah. to be more sport. I think kids need to be doing more things in general. Right. Just right, to keep. Right. Playing, but especially on the athletic side. Um, yes. Now, I have one more question for you. I guess I'll, I'll kind of leave you at this question as a football player, as a football coach. Right. Um, you've you've managed to play for and be around the sport for a very long time now and relatively healthy. Right. right. And, and you've seen a, an influx of, of, of questions around the violence of football. Right. And, and I've been a big proponent on football. Yes, is a violent contact sports, but, mm -hmm. it, but it, it is a sport that you can stay healthy and can be done at the correct way. So how Absolutely. do you kind of convey that to parents or to people that just, just in general that are considering their kid playing football or should they put their kid in football? Well, I mean, the violence of sport, the sport when it comes to concussions and stuff like that, that can be avoided. But you also see, and not only in football, you see in soccer, mm -hmm. a high number of concussions, right? Yep. On uh, hockey, you see a, a large number of concussions. So, um, the concussion um, component of it, yes, we can lower the numbers. Will it completely go away? No, it's not going to go away. But we can, you know, with proper tackling, you know, form tackling, I think the numbers can drop significantly. Um, as far as the other injuries are concerned, once again, you see some of these basketball players with some of these same gruesome injuries that you once only seen football players get, you know what I'm saying? But um, – is it avoidable, that part of it? Probably not, but I don't think it's just uh, specific to the game of football, right. right? So, I mean, obviously football is a lot more violent than a lot of these sports, but we see a lot of these same injuries occurring in all these other sports, right? Any contact sport, there's going to be uh, uh, um, some injuries. So I would just tell the parent that, you know, we teach them how to tackle properly. Um, you know, we're being as safe as possible, and – you know, it's just the nature of the game. What we're going to do our best to make sure that your kid is safe. Sure. Right? And that's pretty much all we can say and all we can do, you know? Yeah, Hopefully the no. equipment gets better and stuff like mm -hmm. that. The game, you know, rules change and it becomes a lot safer. But, you know, we can't completely just get rid of it, the injuries. Yeah. No, no, I agree. I mean, and most injuries are, are involved in every sport. I mean, most injuries are – most injuries that happen in sports are just involved with running. Uh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely, you know, yeah. Yeah. Rolls, yeah, yeah. pulls, things like that, right? Yeah. Um, so, no, I, I, you know, look, I, I've been a fan for a long time, right? I'm I, I honored to call you a friend of mine. Um, I'm happy to see what's going on with the program. First of all, hopefully you stay safe out there, you know, with everything going on with, with COVID and, and your job. Um, but we look forward to, to watching you guys this year. I'm not really sure what's going on with New Jersey with high school sports. I know yeah. kind of everything's kind of on, on the waiver there. But whenever you guys do get back on the field, I wish you nothing but success. I really appreciate you taking the time to come out today. Uh, and, and I'd look to, to do this again with you sometime in the future. Thank you, man. And congratulations to you on, on your show. Uh, obviously, like I said, we, you know, I've known you for a long time. I'm actually proud of what you're doing. Uh, and I wish you nothing but, you know, success. And um, definitely keep in touch. Well, thanks, Keon. I appreciate it, man. And good luck to the Red Wings. All right, brother. Thank you. Thank you.